Uh, hello and welcome back to Tuesday Night Eternal now and Saturdays. Uh, first things first, let's uh, let's look at the at the top eight bracket. Kate, what's going on? Uh, well, what's going on is we have a bunch of mid range decks alongside uh, two uh, Nico Tread, uh, two very different Nico Tread decks that are going uh, heads up against each other in um, in the first round of top eight. Uh, we see we see Jazz, we see Martin, we see uh, Gozu. All of these players running very focused mid range decks that are just trying to outvalue each other. Meanwhile, Phoenix and Mail trying to run decks that are trying to kill the opponent as fast as possible. Very very different parts of the meta game clock right there. Uh, f fair fair enough. Uh, so let's see who who else uh made it in into top eight. So, uh, we have Jez on FJS, John K. Kez, who I'm not sure we, we've we seen today. I think they're on uh, RG Important midrange, maybe? They Martin are on, on uh, FJ, FJS midrange, actually. Okay. Uh, Martin on uh, RG Import, we saw earlier. Gozu on Midcrag. Collector, we haven't had a chance to see today. Hopefully, we will. Also and on then... RG midrange. Oh, Okay. And and and, uh, and their opponent also is... on Argent Port mid range. <laughs> uh, oh, Kroosh also on AP mid. Yeah, it seems the cows have really come home with this new set. Yeah, uh, pretty much every. So we have, I believe, um, one, two, three, four, five. I believe we have five Argent Port or FJS decks. We have one Skycrag, uh, Skycrag non Nico deck. Then we have a two Auto Thread Nico decks. So quite an interesting lineup, uh, if I say so myself. Wow. You don't usually see uh, uh, this this combination of mid range decks and uh, and aggro kind of kind of aggro kind of combo decks with uh, with a value engine in them, I suppose. Hmm. So yeah, right now we're gonna we're gonna see male versus phoenix here, battle of the Nikos. Wow. So male with the no one to hold them. So male really in on this combo. Yeah, um, although funny enough, uh, uh, only one of these players is actually able to uh, to play, uh, to cast their Nikos. You know, that, that's, you know, that, that's sometimes the, the risk you take. Uh, I, 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 for one, am surprised that Nico doesn't have a uh, shadow influence requirement to recur, but hey, uh, such is life. Krull also didn't have the shadow influence on release. Uh, and then got nerfed to two sh needing two shadow, and then got nerfed again to to exhaust the unit uh, it plays. Yeah, a male taking full advantage of uh, of the current printed state of Nico and seeing just how how far they can push uh, they can push Nico without having to actually commit to ever casting uh, casting them. And let's see and Phoenix coming off the gate real fast here. Yeti Explorer into Battlefront Dasher, paying off a little bit of that depth right away. So ball back in Mail's court, and this Genev merchant is going to be unable to block uh, this Yeti Pioneer profitably because of the because be, because of the buff from the Battlefront Dasher. But oh my gosh, Phoenix absolutely breaking on on their draws here. Uh, four power in hand, and yeah, this, this power uh, in the pass. This know. Yeti Pioneer absolutely nothing to ramp into. Uh, but still generating quite a lot of board pressure while male does not have a lot of straight interaction in the hand. Their main form being... And just as you focus. said that, no. <laughs> the, you know, the star of the show, Kenna herself. Ooh, I like this combo. So you know when to hold them for Nico, and then you crafty it away. Oh, that was actually, that was actually quite nice. Yeah, uh, since you do not need to cast Nico... Uh, in this deck, no one to hold them simply becomes a uh, a one mana tutor for one of the engine cards in your deck. Mm hmm. See here a um, a crest keeping Jack on top. It's here. Yeah, and and and, and suddenly. Uh... Okay, we're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and yeah, you know, Phoenix, wow, just drawing more power, like. Ouch. 
Yeah, uh, completely out uh, outscaled on the board, completely outvalued in the hand. This is going to be a quick, uh, quick uh, voyage to game two here. Yeah, you know, Kenna and Jack against Agro is brutal. Not to be done here. A space from mail. Well, tre treasure trove first, of course, and and drawing the uh, the Nico out of thread combo, which will be uh, highly unnecessary. Getting a torch from the void. And wow, another part of the top for Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> Phoenix just didn't get to play Eternal that game, really. Yeah, nine, nine part of the top. Let's hope yep. Phoenix has, has some better luck uh, th this game. You know, uh, so Sunnyvale, uh, who created this deck, posted a screenshot going 19-1 and one over a, a stretch of 20 games. Really impressive. Uh, but hey. Can't win them all. Yeah, of course. If you if you find yourself in the uh, in the wrong uh, wrong side of variance, it can be it can be really tough. I do I do definitely want to see both these players get to play some eternal. Um, both of them are playing the Nico Tread or Auto Nico, however you wanna however you wanna say it. Nico Tread, definitely Nico Tread. Nico Tread. Uh, both of them are playing Nico Tread, and uh, they both are playing it for basically different reasons. Um. The Stone Scar deck is kind of playing it as an extra piece of reach, as well as being able to cast Nico as a very, very aggressive unit after a couple of auto thread triggers. Meanwhile, the Skyrack deck is using it sort of like a value engine. More mm -hmm. So two very different approaches to these to these very synergistic cards. Yeah. So Direwolf apparently liked what was going on with the initial release of Kroll. And try to bite, <laughs> bite that apple again, and let's see if it, if it works out this time without uh, demanding several nerfs. Oh, trying to bottle lightning twice. <laughs> hey, you know, part of the beauty of a digital card game is that you can nerf one card and then you, you try something else again instead of having to ban it. Absolutely. Uh, we see here Phoenix getting off to a much, much better, more aggressive start with the Battle from Dasher on turn one. Mail here, kind of a slow start. They have auto thread, but their earliest play is on turn three currently. Yeah, so Mail Mail has to take another, you know, has to just play power and pass and take another hit, I think. Yeah. However, Mail does have Island Hand of the Tempest on curve, another new card from Unleash is a 4-4 four, four Aegis, uh Frenzy, plus one plus one, and flying the stern. And her ultimate, uh, it is nine ma nine power to play um, Child of Tempest. Tempest. Uh, however, does that th that does get reduced with every frenzy trigger? This is true, but from my experience, having played Eileen, I'm not too impressed with her. Uh, she just oftentimes she just felt like a four four Aegis without any real text. Maybe she she gets in a flying attack once in a game. Uh, but overall, you know, the potential is there. The reality, not so much. Phoenix and, uh, keeping on the aggression here with a seal, no regrets. Uh, contracting on the Battlefront Dasher for huge six damage. Male might might block here to try and stop the bleeding so they can hit their their key units. No taking six to the face right away. No hesitation. There was definitely some hesitation, but the decision was, you know, between a rock and a hard place, so. This no, time, here. Phoenix clearly able to play Eternal. The question yeah. is, how will they work through this uh, Eileen? Yeah, uh, this is actually quite an awkward board state for Phoenix. The Eileen kind of acting as a bit of a, a, bit of a doorstop to their, to their aggression. Honestly, I wouldn't be averse to swinging in with the Battlefront Dasher. If it trades for the Genev Merchant, that's fine. If Eileen blocks it, uh, play the Auto Tread, pitch the Grenadin, and then the Torch. Uh, Torch's current state as a non-fast spell coming in uh, very, uh, very highly here. Uh, as uh, Phoenix could have been able to swing in and double Torch one of the units, possibly the Eileen, and getting uh, a favorable trade there. Right. But yeah, look who showed up. Kenna uncontained. Going to eat eat the sill. 
and suddenly not only that but mail uh, uh is also able to just play the spells in their hand without paying a heavy heavy life toll right here although phoenix is holding six points of reach in their hand and along with an auto thread so there's a very very real threat of uh of possible little lethal damage on this board yeah, so this attack has to be blocked, I th I think. There's no way you go to 7 uh, against, you know, a fire deck without... And mail, mail does indeed uh, double... Uh, 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 not double block, but blocks both units. And Eileen, currently a 4-1. We might see an auto thread pitching uh, League Explorer alongside the Grenadine to take off the alien off the board. You know... Now, now is now is good. No, the best chance you're going to get to remove the Silin, uh, and it looks like this auto trade is going to go after her. Yep, okay, Silin removed. But... Auto trade uh, clear to swing in on the next turn with two more activations. Unfortunately, mirror image on the Kena. Ouch. Yeah. I uh, see Mario and Kenna, and of course, these Kenna's attacking phase are going to fuel each other's ultimates. And uh, if those ever pop, an already an already not very optimistic looking game might uh, might just be fully lost. Yeah, I mean, Kenna against aggro units that don't have deadly, she is brutal. <laughs> uh, oh, you know um... the. Phoenix with another out of, uh, out of a top deck. That is actually quite interesting. That auto tread just is just out of gas. I'm sorry. Hmm. Trying to see what's in their market. They are going for a Caleb's Persuader, hoping that Mail does not have an answer for the Ixton Merchant so that can cleanly swing in. For hopefully quite a bit of damage, as the Ixton Merchant does have Overwhelm. And also getting, uh, getting some extra fuel for hopefully a future auto thread. Meanwhile, on the male side, um, they are pretty chill. They are, they are content to just keep attacking, play this Merchant, go fetch... Um, Go fetch probably a so some sort of interaction, likely uh, likely ice bolt, probably. That's exactly the fetch. Mail saw saw the the market grab. Probably expects the Caleb's persuader, and yeah, this Ixen merchant's just going to get shot down in the spot. Absolutely brutal. Gonna see a little bit of ramp, getting another piece of fire sigils and uh well phoenix is not quite dead on board but there's close i think they, i think they are is, is there a torch in the void uh for mail oh that is that is correct i'm i'm sorry so these canals are gonna swing in they're going to trigger ultimate and grab the torch yeah i, I i'm not i don't remember a torch being played this game i could be wrong Mail seems to only be attacking with one canal here. Uh, no, their void, their void contains just ice bolt and mirror image. However, they they will get both of those back. Okay, so yeah. mail hanging back with one Kenna in case there's some sort of charge shenanigans uh, coming down. I'm not yeah. sure what chargers. Uh, Oh, I think there are a couple of copies of uh, Inferno Phoenix. That is correct. There are two copies of Inferno Phoenix on Phoenix's deck, as this, as you would expect from their username. Uh, but yeah, yep. male, male hanging back with an Ice Bolt and a Flicker, basically completely immune to any any possible plays by Phoenix. Yeah, that 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 was uh, you know, Phoenix is not getting through here. That's gonna be that's gonna be an easy two and O for mail. Uh, and we jump right into another match here: Gozu versus one of our uh, one of our AP midrange players. Uh, there is a uh, power creeped tomb protector. I do not know the name of that card. <laughs> 
it it is tomb protector. Uh, it is it is not tomb protector. It does have the tomb protector text. Oh, uh, I do not uh, remember it then. Yeah, it is it is a six triple time six eight. Your card cannot be stolen. Uh, and uh, plus one maximum power alongside another piece of text. Oh. But um, yeah, don't know who, don't know where that will uh, come from. Uh, oh wait, no. Uh, Gozu is running uh, is running multiple copies of um, unstable form. Unstable form. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite, this is. Uh, yeah, Un- unsta- running unstable form in Throne as a form of interaction is certainly quite bold. The uh, the wide breadth of uh, possible uh, possible transformation targets uh, in uh, in Throne does. Um, it does make it very likely that you will most often than not downgrade a unit into something a lot less crucial to your opponent's game plan, but it is still a very real, a very real risk that you are taking. Yeah, I mean the the the, the issue the issue here, uh, as with e, e, you know equivocate, is that transformation effects you know do lose a bit of their luster when your uh, target is a high cost target, because when they're a low cost target. Uh, you know, the transformation is going to transform them into something irrelevant, most likely. But when they're a high cost target, you, you know, even high cost draft chaff uh, can still, you know, hit hard. And that's all you needed to do. Absolutely. We see Gozu here pick up a uh, a bullseye, not super relevant this board state. So they're going to market for a Helio here. Which next turn they'll be able to fire for three Hulk cards. However, they are facing five damage in the air and a six eight on the board. Oh dear lord! Uh, that's a roll on the top for Martin, making the chump extremely awkward for Gozu. But it yeah, has this, to be done. this is an extremely awkward chump block for sure. Uh, and Martin also holding a copy of No Die Enemy. Which uh, kills each unit would cost two or less, and you can amplify it to play a unit would cost five or less from the top five cards of your deck. Hey, Helio is going to grab three cards. None, Those of these, cards uh, are none of these seem very, very impactful now. <laughs> and uh, this is a pretty clear ace space from Martin into into a lethal, I believe. It's a, it's wow. a brawn. One yeah, off. Yeah, so it seems it seems a Roland got unstable formed. Ah, uh, and then th- there we go. That that would do it. Uh however, uh, the six eight is a six cause. Does that does that mean Roland got unstable formed twice? That must have been a really. Oh, brawn is is it cost five. Oh, it does. Wow. Okay. Uh, never never mind. Time units. <laughs> Just, just time unit things. Gonna yep, see a defeat. they're big. Yeah, they can be very, very big. Gonna go to game three here on this uh, Argentport, uh, Argentport mid range versus uh, Kenna and friends by Gozu. Yep. So Roland seems to be uh, the main key card here on uh, on Martin's deck. Uh, as it, it creates. Sorry, God. Yeah, as it turns out. Endurance units with high health are very good against Skycrag. Yeah, um, not only that, but uh, the Skycrag, uh, Gozu's deck being uh, a mid-range deck, means the Roland creates very, very awkward situations with, uh, with his Silver Belly Drippers. Yeah, a- 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 absolutely. Okay, uh, Gozu looking at a pair, a pair of plonks, you know, coming yeah. down on turn two and three. Pocket, no, po- not pocket bad. plunks, pocket plunks, not looking bad. Pocket plunks, not looking bad indeed. Uh, we see uh, Martin firing off on uh, an Argent Port crest here. Both players trading crests. Jural on top. Um, without primal symbol, I think Gozu might be tempted to keep this on top. However, it is pretty soft to uh, Martin's interaction. They are running annihilate uh, three copies. So gonna bottom the Jural, just hoping to dig for uh faster for Kenna by the looks of it. Yeah. Firing off uh, the lost scroll here. Uh you know can can wait on the exploit. No no real hurry. Turn Unstable two turn two lost scroll on the play. You know w- one of the most 
you know, that's exactly why you play Arjun Port. Like, forget everything else. Turn two Lost Scroll on the play into a turn three Magnum Ventress or, or Roland is Absolutely. what, what the Steyr archetype is about nowadays. Being able being able to skip uh, to skip turn three, which does not have a lot of action, past the merchant and the Valkyrie Enforcer right into your powerful four drops like Man of Ventures and Roland is so so important. And uh, they create again such awkward board situations for the opponent. Speaking of the merchant, we're gonna see it come down here, playing depleted power on, on Martin's side. Let's see Plunk swing. And Gozu uh, making three of a kind plunks here. <laughs> yep. Martin drawing some decent interaction for Plunk. Just gonna play CDT here. Oh, however, uh, Gozu this with the display of survival. Of survival. Uh, they can make an attack into the uh, CDT. The block will make Plunk into a 4-2. The Display of Survival will make the Sedity into a 1-4. And that's a clean trade for Gozu. One main deck answers for Gozu to, to these large units. But now, you know, the, this Plunk is, you know, going to eat the silence and the Annihilate Plunk, plunk number two down. Well, how do we feel about Plunk number three? Oh no, we're going straight into Crafty Occultist, getting a... Uh, oh, pitching both unstable forms, interesting. Giving the Crafty Occultist, Flying Hiver is going to get stunned by a Furious Magnaventrix. Martin starting to apply pressure to Gozu's life total. Indeed, but here's Kenna off uncontained off the top. So the question is, does Gozu want to... Uh, display this Magna Ventress or instead go after or just cleanly kill the Enforcer with Kenna. I uh, think I go after the Enforcer because, well, Kenna has Kenna. Yeah, uh, not only that, but you can probably stave off a single hit of the Magna Ventress. It is, it is only six, uh, six power while attacking, so not, yep. not too bad just yet. We're going to see and, exactly that. And now Martin just uh, a complete lack of, you know, lack of answers for the seven attack in the air that's that's just hitting yeah. every turn. Uh, display of survival has to be the grab here, though. Absolutely. Uh, Martin here likely to just fire these pocket exploits. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to see both display and jack go. Leaving them with a, with a plunk that is dead against a ground magnaventrix. And with a dazzle that also cannot stun the uh, the magnetrix, or the Roland, yeah. So I assume we're gonna see no plunder targets here. So apparently the annihilate uh, gets the gets plundered. That is that is reasonable if you feel if you uh, if you are going to exploit the jack away. As Annihilate is currently very dead on the on the board state. Correct. Martin drawing a Zvetia of the top. Not quite ideal, but depending on what 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 the Zvetia what the, what the Zvetia buffs and what is coming off of the top, could could be could be pretty good. Oh, um, Martin has actually taken away the Dazzle, not the Jack. Interesting, Interesting. decision. So we're going to see a Plunk here going down on the board. This Magniventrix swinging only as a 3-5. Very easy for Gozer just to tank with their life total, which is sitting somewhat comfortably at 13. Gonna see Svetia a is going to make things a bit less comfortable in a hurry, though. Uh, you know, three, three on the ground is much different than eight on the ground. Yeah. Svetia also locking away this jack. Very, very important because it means that Gozu cannot generate a chump blocker for at least a little bit more. Let's see, Crafty Occultist. Uh, I assume Kenna's ultimate is three hits away, which is why uh, there, were, there were no attacks with the Kenna. Wow, a pair of duels after Svetia Lightbringer hits 
hits the board. Well, those duels are not going to mean a lot unless uh, unless Martin can actually top the whatever they are, what they are buffing. Sure, but we we ass- but eighteen life, uh, you know, that's that's most likely. Maple of Huntress, Maple of Huntress being able to cleanly kill the Zvetia off here. That is a huge top deck for Gozu right here. Correct. The question is, uh, does Gozu want to keep the Maple of Huntress uh, by imbuing the the Crafty Occultist? Or even the Plonk, really? Uh, could could go after the Magna Ventress and draw with the Plonk. Hmm. That is very possible. The the Mabel of Huntress can also transform this power into uh, into a treasure, a trove, treasure yes. trove. However, I'm not sure how ideal that is for Gozo in their current position. We're gonna see. We're gonna see some swings to activate Kenna's ultimate. Getting display of survival from the void. Okay. Indeed, we're going to see Mabel of Huntress. On the Kenna. Okay, so clean up Svetia. Yeah. yeah. And keeping the display of survival up for the Magnaventrix in case of more armor. Not bad at all. But a huge Svetia light- Lightbringer off the top. So if Gozu fires off the display of survival, which they will, means they will have no answer for the Svetia as Jack could have popped the Svetia's Aegis. A 9-9 nine, nine Svetia Lightbringer. Quite a lot of pressure on, um, on, the, on the ground. However, Svetia can easily be double blocked. And Gozu is still applying pressure on the air with the Crafty Occultist. So, um, Martin not quite out of the woods just yet. That Winchester Merchant actually a blank right now as they have no card they can mark it away. That... Merchant is all is a six six. That is that is actually quite important. We're gonna see a double block here, which will unlock the Kenna, putting uh, putting uh, Martin dead from the Jack. Oh no no they they played Merchant as a, as a blocker. My bad. I am. <laughs> so we're gonna see a dazzle. He's gonna get dazzled here. Yeah, that still puts uh, puts Martin. To one. Correct. That's the very, uh, very crucial top deck for, top deck for Martin here. Absolute break in the form of a Justice Sigil. This is going to be a good games from the Jack. Saditi, not good enough. It's, it's not often that 9 9 Saditi fails to get the job done, but here we are. Yeah, that two damage. Not even gonna need the basic sigil. And That's gonna that be... is the match for Gozu. Mid Craig. Oh, and we're being informed that is the end of the round. Uh, we'll see you uh, on the next one.